This is going to be a short video come testimony um, about somebody, I don't want to be too specific, so we'll say met recently in a supermarket situation at the checkout and of course I'm putting my goods in for payment and there's an opportunity to talk to this person. And just a mature lady, let's put it that way, a mature lady, she's over 40, I don't want to say any more ages in, in case she watches this and is insulted but she's over 40 um, and we, we talked about things and just in the conversation of what I was buying etc anyway so we got into a conversation and um, I said I've got something for you she said oh uh, you give me one of your cards I said okay well I'm not sure if you had this one so I gave her um, another card come leaflet um, and she was pretty thrilled to get it and then she made a confession well I, I am a Christian she said she said but I don't go to church and I've heard this before and we take things at face value benefit of the doubt she calls herself a Christian out of her mouth comes a declaration of who she is that she confesses to be a Christian and so I said, OK, I understand. And um, uh, and then I, I then suggested, were you a question? Were you brought up in the church, Sunday school and so forth? She said, yes. And she said, but I don't go to church. I said, OK, so you don't go anywhere on Sunday. But can I ask you another question? She said, yes. I said, would you say that Jesus is Lord of your life is he number one and she said without hesitation she said oh yes absolutely absolutely I, I've always believed in Jesus and there it is at face value she confesses Christ if you confess Christ is Lord of your life and of course there's a whole context of, of uh, scriptures to go with that because some people quote that as their pet scripture but, by the, but there's no fruit of repentance in their life. And if, if, if we were to examine ourselves, would we uh, be objective ab about our own life? Are we really like Christ? Like Christ. And some people who confess Christ as Lord, I love Jesus, I pray, I sing the songs, I do this, I do that, I do this, all for him... But when you press them about what is their testimony, they've got nothing to say. And they come out with those trite phrases like, I was christened, I went to a Christian church, I sang the Christian hymns, I gave money to the Christian church. They might even say, I, I went to a Bible college and I was trained to be a church minister. And I've had a job in the church ever since. A church organisation or a, a Christian organisation, a charity organisation, a ministry organisation, and they say that because they are working for God, in quotes, and they might think it literally, I'm working for God, God is in the company, and they might claim, I'm working for God, therefore I am saved because I work for God. But of course, you know, brethren, with that repentance of sin, with that dealing with the issue of sin, there can be no forgiveness of sin unless a person repents and admits to being a sinner. And, and it's the Bible taken in, in the full context. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart, well, that's in the context of all of it. The born again, baptized with the Holy Spirit. There is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who do not live according to sinful nature, but they do live according to the Holy Spirit. And as always, I'm preaching to myself. Like the previous video, the battle is within. 
<clears throat> There's a battle going on externally to us, of course, a spiritual battle out there. But there's also a spiritual battle going on in here, within me. My spirit and my soul and my flesh. And of course, my flesh, your flesh, wars against my spirit. And I'm talking about my human spirit. And, and, and God, the Holy Spirit, he's in my... <coughs> excuse me. He's in my human spirit. The temple for the Holy Spirit. The temple not made by human hands. No man has made a man. Yes, they, they, they can clone sheep and they're probably cloning human babies as far, as far as we know. At least to the fetus stage. Because that's what scientists do. Legally or illegally, they experiment with the science, with the physics, with the chemistry, with the biology. That's what scientists do. Whether it's legal or not, whether it's ethical or not, that's what scientists do. But no scientist can create a human spirit because God is the creator. The uncreated creator created me before I was formed in my mother's womb. God knew me. Like Jeremiah, God knew me. And like Esther, we are all sent into this generation for such a time as this. Now, that's not a Christian cliche. It's the truth. Those of us born of Christ, in Christ, with Christ, with the Holy Spirit, forgiven for sin, with a 100% resolve to go and sin no more, to resist temptation, to shun evil, to put your back onto evil, not to look at evil. Well, if I'm being super spiritual, which I'm not, that means we have to leave this world completely because this world is full of evil. Not 100%. There are still some good people out there who are given over to good charitable good causes but like i said they haven't had their sin dealt with and if they continue with that mindset i don't need to be born again because i'm good enough to go to heaven look at all the good works i've done i'm good enough and, and god will remember me on the day of judgment when i open up my books and i show god what i've done he'll be pleased with me that is not faith. That is not faith. That is not what God is saying. God has made it very clear. We have the Bible. We have the Holy Spirit. We have fellow believers. So back to this lady, middle-aged woman who believes in Christ, loves Jesus, looks a lovely, clean, kindly lady. She went on to explain in this very short time we had, she said, I don't go to church because I've met people in the community who do go to church. And she said, I can see that their life isn't right. And of course, she's judging them. And of course, she thinks she's better than them because she's not as bad as them. But this lady really does believe in Jesus, and she has declared Jesus is Lord. So <clears throat> I've made a note of her name. I know where she works. I will do some follow-up, maybe with my wife. We'll go in there and we'll, we'll feed her some daily breads every day with Jesus. UCB word for today. Maybe give her a Bible and pray for her on the spot. Invite her to receive the Holy Spirit as her teacher. <clears throat> All because I have been going to that shop, many supermarkets around Norwich, UK, um, since the lockdown. I've been going to all these different supermarkets and just getting the things. 
and giving them cards. So I gave her the invitation again, John 3, 16 and 17, and the prayer for her to make that prayer her own. So these are seeds. That's all they are. There are people who are very against sinners' prayers. That doesn't save anybody. No. A form of words doesn't save anybody. But if they make that form of words their prayer by faith, that God is telling them to get right with him, that's a prayer to do that. And it's specifically aimed at people who have not committed their lives to Christ. The prayer that Jesus taught the disciples, we call it the Lord's Prayer. It's the, dis it's the prayer Jesus gave the disciples. Those words are meaningless unless you mean them. So that is not quite a sinner's prayer, but it is a prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. And bear in mind they were already his disciples, and this was before the cross, before the sacrifice of, of himself, before the resurrection, Jesus taught his disciples the teaching, how to live, how to be set apart from this world. And that prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Of course, that's in English for me, but the original language, Aramaic, Hebrew, Greek, God knows the language you speak to him. God knows your heart. And God knows the heart of this lady, this cashier, and that God knows her sincerity, whether that uh, God is the number one in her life, as she declared. So I'm just going to finish it now. God bless you, brethren of the one God. Pray for us. Pray for this lady. Pray for the uh, trolley boy, the supermarket trolley boy, as I call him. Trevor, I've known him for years. He has committed his life using that sinner's prayer. And he really means it. And we can see that. So we, we, we're going to encourage him. So these are encouragements for us. And we pray that the Lord would lead this lady to find at least one born-again Christian where she lives, and maybe accompany her on a Sunday to where she goes and explain that many churchgoers are not born of God yet, but they claim to be Christian. And without, without um, uh, repentance, there's no forgiveness. But when you repent, when you commit your life to Christ, there has to be fruit. There has to be fruit because the world sees us. And, and the world judges us by a standard it doesn't judge itself. So let's leave it there. God bless you. Keep praying for us. And uh, we'll keep praying for you, of course. And keep in touch. I do read your comments and uh, catch up as, as soon as I can. And you are in our prayers generally anyway. God bless you.